Takara poparanga popare paro. Ah. Oh man. Uh, today is a sad day in Ninja's world. Uh, this is probably going to be old news by the time that this comes out. If this comes out. But news has broke a few days ago that a very influential person has passed away. And this was a person that uh, I have to thank for a lot of my early childhood memories and ambitions. And I am just so bummed out today. Um, I've been kind of bummed out for a few days because of this. Uh, you know, um, sometimes someone you never even meet can really uh, make an impact on you. And uh, this person was definitely uh, someone like that in my life personally. Um, for those who do not know, uh, news has come out that Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball, and its sequel in the West, uh, Dragon Ball Z. I say in the West because I think uh, in Japan it was all originally just called Dragon Ball. Um, but he has passed away. And um, anyone who knows me can tell you that I am one of the biggest Dragon Ball Z fans. I have been a huge fan of that show since I was just a, a small, small child. I, um, I watched it and, and got a lot of inspiration from it in some pretty sad times in my life. And, uh, that show and the characters in that show, like Gohan and Piccolo and Trunks and Boo and all of them. Uh, I, I grew up drawing those characters so much, and um, and I, I think uh, doing that is a lot of the reason that I still like to draw today. I um, I basically learned to draw on those characters and, and Toriyama's designs, and um, his work has been so inspirational to me for. Uh, so much of my life um, I I played a lot of the games growing up with my friends after school I remember uh, we would role play the characters at recess sometimes uh, even today I have a bunch of really cool merchandise that I uh, keep on display in my house uh, because I'm just so fond of the show that that I want people who uh, come and visit to <laughs> uh, see that and talk about it with me because I can just talk about that show for hours. Um, so I'm pretty sad today and uh, just as a small gesture uh, I think over on the mountainside I'm gonna build uh, just a tiny little build to honor the memory of uh, Toriyama in this world. Uh, just a small gesture, because uh, I think, um, as small as it may be, uh, it, might, it might help. It might feel nice to do. And this is the finished build. It's a uh, Minecraft replica of Grandpa Gohan's house from the original Dragon Ball series. I tried to make it mostly as accurate as I could, but um, I added some details here and there just to make it look a little bit prettier in Minecraft version. Um, can dispense the Dragon Balls 
onto this little stand right here like it was in the show this is Grandpa Gohan's Dragon Ball so um yeah this was um pretty cool to build the copper on the uh, edges here is uh, eventually going to turn green uh, so it's not totally accurate right now but over time it's gonna look a little bit nicer uh, I originally had it just as uh, these blue stairs all the way around but um, the texture was a little bit too busy so I uh, thought I needed to add something to break it up a little bit more um, but yeah, it should look pretty cool after a little while. You can see it's already starting to oxidize a little bit uh, over on this corner over here and a little bit back here as well. As always, I've been messing around with the house um, in small ways, uh, trying to see what looks good and what doesn't look so good. Um, and the reason I never really do too much of a single build in one session uh, is because uh, when I'm doing it in the moment, it's kind of hard for me to decide if I really think it looks good or uh, if it doesn't look too good, what it's missing. Um, so usually when I'm recording these videos and uh, editing them, it gives me a chance to take a, a fresh look on uh, what I'm doing and um, from there I get a better idea if uh, it's something I want to change up or not. Um, and one of those things right now is the roof here. I um, had it last episode as just straight stone brick and I thought that looked kind of uh, too much of one texture. Uh, so I changed that to be just kind of more of a trim and filled the inside parts with andesite, which looks a whole lot nicer. Um, it was still kind of plain in this part, so I uh, added some window-type features here and then uh, put some wooden framing around it to kind of give the area a bit more color. I finished this part of the roof as well and the way I designed it, it kind of came to a weird flat edge right here. So um, I thought it might be kind of cool to add this gear looking thing coming out. Uh, and I used the new copper blocks for it that slowly oxidize and get green over time. So I think that's giving the whole uh, build kind of a worn uh, steampunk type workshop aesthetic uh, which is pretty cool it's exactly what we're going for I'm probably gonna do the same thing on the other side over here I also started building out the frame for what's going to be the enchantment room and um, tried to add some supports below to make the structure of it make just a little bit more sense. I stripped out all the walls up here because I wasn't really happy with the way I had things set up. Um, and right now it's kind of a mess. Uh, but I had an idea for what to do with this room. And I'm uh, pretty excited about it. So uh, I think it's going to look pretty cool. And it shouldn't take too long.
Oh yeah, a room with a view. A view of a frog. I really like frogs. <laughs> I gotta say, this is uh, probably my favorite build that I've made so far in this world. Um, and even better, it has a interactive feature. Um, or I guess not really interactive. Uh, I set it up to a random sort of timer, so it uh, should be firing any time now. But while we wait, I did want to name him real quick. Oh, I'm in the floor. We have a couple cool little things for uh, our friend to play with. We have a lily pad here. Um, a nice azalea bush. I even seen him uh, get up on this moss one time. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I have a a random timer set up um, with, connected to a piston that'll uh, release a little shower of water every once in a while too. Um, and it's actually pretty cool. Sometimes he'll try to swim around in this. Um, oh, maybe he's gonna do it now. Oh, he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so that just uh, comes in and out every once in a while, and I think that's pretty cool. It adds uh, a lot of life to the room. It took me a few tries to actually make the random timer work the way I wanted it to. Uh, the original concept I had uh, connected it to a piece of sugarcane, actually, um, and I had it designed like 90% of the way there, um, and it was working pretty well, but the problem was that I couldn't get it compact enough to actually destroy the sugarcane after I had a piston uh, break it, because um, it kind of ran on the same system as my... Uh, farm down here um, with an observer and a piston uh, so every time the the reeds grew to full length uh, the observer would catch that and the piston would break them uh, but this is a really thin area and I couldn't fit a lava block or a cactus block in any sort of place that would um, make it work without coming out from the central stem. Um, and I was pretty stumped for a little while. I wasn't sure how I was going to get around that. Um, I thought maybe I could use uh, some sort of a hopper timer or something, uh, or maybe there's another block that updates every so often that would work. Um, and after a while, I had <laughs> um, sort of an epiphany, um, a thought that, hey, maybe I'm overcomplicating this too much. Uh, so we're going to take a peek into the mechanics here real quick. Um, and I'm going to show you that this design is completely snow powered. <laughs> uh, -huh. Uh, yeah, so um, I originally had a, a reed farm connected to a T flip flop, um, and the uh, guts of that are still underneath here. Um, so this pressure plate actually activates the T flip flop, which is completely unnecessary, uh, but I like keeping it that way because it actually uh, makes a little extra piston clink when it fires, uh, and I think that's. Um, a neat effect. I actually like that sound quite a bit, and I think it adds to the sort of workshoppy feel that we have going on in the build. Um, but yeah, it's really simple. Every time uh, he walks on the pressure plate, the water is going to be falling down below, and every time he is not on the pressure plate, uh, there's going to be no water. But yeah, this is really cool. I could stare at it for hours. I really like watching it swim around. Are, are the Endermen stacking blocks? <laughs> what? Oh man, they're actually building structures. This is crazy.
they're learning guys oh. <laughs> oh that's so funny I didn't place either of these <laughs> oh and there's another one oh my god my world dude there's another one what the heck <laughs> I'm sick of them oh my gosh how did oh, I need to light this place up better <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, anyway, um, so you know me. Always building. Uh, I've just kind of been doing my own thing up here. Uh, excuse uh, just everything we got going on here right now. I'm uh, trying stuff out, okay? <laughs> Don't judge me. Um, but I ordered something a while ago on Minecraft is on and I was uh, kind of hoping it would have gotten delivered by now uh, but I just received an update and I'm super mad I'm telling you you can't really trust anybody these days uh, I received an update that they delivered it um, but somehow they thought my address uh, was somewhere in the middle of the ocean <laughs> Uh, that's where it got delivered to, somewhere out there. Um, so that kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm pretty mad about it. Um, I think I'm going to have to go on a field trip uh, to try and find it. Uh, see if we can salvage anything. Um, and if not, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that looks like something over there. Is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's definitely it, but it looks like it's in some pretty rough shape, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This thing's fried, what the heck? It's like spaghetti in here. Oh man, okay, yeah. I don't think I'm getting any use out of this, unfortunately. Yeah, so we're gonna have to do a tiny bit of wiring. I know, <laughs> so sad. <laughs> um, but it should be pretty quick and easy. Uh, fortunately, I already built this once before somewhere else, uh, so I kind of have an idea for how much space it's going to take up this time. Uh, but just in case, I'm going to build it before I design the room around it. Uh, just so I don't have to redo anything later, because that would kind of suck. Um, and yeah, I'll, uh, probably just, uh, talk about this a little bit more when it's finished, because it's, uh, kind of hard to wire and talk about what I'm doing at the same time. Uh, but I am following a uh, design by, uh, Impulse SV while I'm thinking on it, at least in part. I'm uh, sort of combining two different things here. Ta-da! Uh, so yeah, <laughs> uh, what do we got going on here? Um, this is an auto smelting item sorting machine. Uh, and I followed a tutorial uh, for the item sorting portion of this about a week and a half ago. I tried to learn more so how it worked than just following it block by block. Um, so with this I was able to do it mostly on my own. Uh, there was a couple kitches but I uh, figured them out through trial and error pretty quickly. So I uh, I think I get what's going on enough to explain it, and uh, I'm going to try to do that real quick before I uh, end the session, because I'm getting some kind of
kind of weird frame lag and I think I need to restart my computer. Uh, but let's check out what we got going on underneath the hood here. Uh, so the first thing is this auto smelter, which is just the exact same one from downstairs. Literally, I just stripped it from downstairs and brought it up here to save on resources. Uh, for demonstration's sake, I'm gonna throw some stone in here. Um, and maybe some, let's see, cobbled deep slate to, uh, uh, demonstrate the overflow system as well. Um, anyway, after things are done uh, in the auto smelting system, instead of a chest, they're going to be fed into this dropper here, uh, which is actually a series of droppers or an item elevator. Um, and every time something ends up in here, this comparator is going to catch that and power this line uh, super briefly. Uh, which this observer will notice if I have a block here. Uh, I think I messed it up. There we go. Um, but this observer notices that and then powers this series of observers all looking at each other, uh, which will pulse these droppers in a row, feeding it up through this pipeline. Um, and then items get fed into the main enchilada of the design. This is kind of the meat of it over here. Uh, and this is the item sorting system that I was talking about. I have no idea what this is doing here. Um, but this main pipeline here is where things feed through initially. Below that we have sort of an item filtering system for different stuff that I want to collect. Uh, and it's mainly just a bunch of stuff that I think I'll be cooking a lot. Uh, these comparators are checking these constantly um, so that they have exactly 45 items inside of them at all times. Um, but if, let's say, another piece of copper were to come uh, through this pipeline, it would uh, feed into here, and that would be a 46th item. So instead of this line being powered by two pieces of redstone dust, it would be powered by three pieces of redstone dust um, for just as long as that 46th item is in here. Uh, so down below that, you can see that I uh, connected each of those lines to an inverter, which will depower the hopper here uh, for just long enough to unlock it uh, for that the 46th item to feed through into a chest, um, which is how it gets sorted. Uh, and then as soon as there's 45 items in the filter again, there's only going to be two pieces of redstone dust powered, so the inverter is not going to be activated, and the hopper is going to remain locked uh, until another item that matches comes through. Um, and sometimes an item that matches none of these filters will come through. Uh, so that's what this hopper is for. Um, I don't think... Yeah, the cobbled deep slate should come through in just a second, uh, which I actually didn't have filtered through any of this, so it should end up here. Yep. Um, and then I'm going to have that just kind of feed out to a chest on the outside as a sort of catch-all overflow chest. And that's pretty much it. That's uh, how the whole system works. Anyway, I think I'm going to call it a session there. Uh, we've done quite a bit actually. Uh, some building and some redstone stuff. so. Uh, it's getting to be about that time again. Uh, but yeah, I think next time I'm probably going to prioritize making an iron farm because that auto smelter took like literally the entire rest of my iron supply. 
it needed so many hoppers. <laughs> um, I could probably use water in some places strategically to save on a few of them, but uh, it doesn't really matter too much. I'd rather make a farm. So, until next time, I guess.